Motherhood Incorporated proudly presents Military Mom Talk Radio live on toginet.com. Co-hosted by Robin Boyd and Sandra Beck, the owner of Motherhood Incorporated. Military Mom Talk Radio is here with a powerful platform for women to discuss their ideas, issues, and concerns with respect to the military lifestyle. Military Mom Talk Radio encourages you to share your experiences of being a military wife and mother. This show is dedicated to educating your family about the many resources that are available in both the public and private sector. And we'll be sharing helpful information from women all over the world. We'll cover everything military from helping a family member cope with post-traumatic stress disorder to navigating government programs dealing with family issues to the struggles of deployment along with being a working mother both in and out of the home. This is Military Mom Talk Radio, and here are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Military Mom Talk Radio. We're so glad you're with us today on a very hot summer day. I don't think there's a spot in the country that isn't a hot one. It looks like it's just a typical mid-July day. And can you believe it? We're already about halfway through July. It just doesn't take long. Are the back-to-school stuff things out in your in your neck of the woods? I bet they are. <laughs> July 4th comes and boom, all the back-to-school stuff comes out. So... Um, I am here on behalf of Sandra Beck today. She is away, so we say hello to Sandra. And uh, before we say hello to our guest today, we have Deb Boulanger, who is a life coach and nutrition coach and owner of LiveAWholeLife.net. She has so many wonderful things to share with us today. Before we say hi to her, though, I just wanted to kind of uh, give a couple of little notes that I found in my tr- in my virtual travels around the country today. Um, I wanted to bring to your attention a neat program. If you have some young people or uh, college people in your life who are looking for an internship in the fall, there is a military extension internship program coming up. Um, it is through uh, Purdue and uh, the Military Readiness um, uh, Readiness Program. It is something that you may want to check out if you are either a recent graduate or you are probably in your final points of your college career. Uh, Through work experiences with military youth and child programs, these interns will gain valuable knowledge and skills that they can transfer to all aspects of their lives. The DOD and Purdue University have partnered to expose students to high-quality child care and youth programs on military installations around the world. So we're not even talking just uh, on the U.S. states here. We are talking around the world. Um, These programs would provide examples of best practices used through the child and youth care industries. So if that's a direction, a career path that you are someone you know are thinking about, you may want to go to militaryonesource.mil, check out their monthly focus tab, and it's going to give you a lot of information. And speaking of that monthly focus tab, you may want to check that out periodically, monthly, as, as indicated here. They have a lot of different articles. Um, some of them are you're able to get right into. Some of them you just have to sign up and become a, uh, a member for login. But we're talking about money management, pan- parenting, relationship and health, in health, family and wellness, um, crisis and prevention, disaster resources. There's a ton of information at this website so I encourage you to go to militaryonesource.mil they are good friends of ours and we hope that you will avail yourselves of all of the services they have for you Um, another thing that I noticed on the website there is um, let me just pull up my notes the San Diego Unified School District is hosting a military appreciation fair in August Um, it is let me see the date Uh, do I have it Uh, of course I don't have it (laughs) it's in August but I want you to go to uh, WKSON no, excuse me, www.kson.com, the radio station that is out in San Diego. That's where I found it. It is, I believe, August 9th is their date. So uh, check it out. They have a great program in store. They also, I also found the uh, Merit. 
American Military Partner Association has a series of things. They're more on the East Coast out here. Um, if you go to uh, email partners at militarypartners.org, they have an online um, class on July 20th, getting your degree as a mill spouse student. They have on August 23rd in Norfolk, Virginia, um, a Hampton Roads Pride Festival. You, They will have a booth there, and on September 20th, they will be in South Georgia um, for the South Georgia Fair that... Um, it sounds like it's a like a county type fair. It must be a statewide fair. Volunteers and um, are are welcome, but also just go and say hello to the great folks at American Military Partner Association. So lots of stuff going on this summer, uh, and I hope that it's a busy summer for you. I hope you're finding some wonderful ways to spend your summer, especially if your kids are are home and you've got a little vacation time. And that's something that um, I want to say hello to our guest today, Deb Boulanger. Uh, Deb came to a point as she neared midlife where she realized that she was not where she felt she wanted to be. And living a happy and happy life was not in the same sentence. Living and happy is what I wanted to say, <laughs> was not in the same sentence, so to speak. And this started her on a journey of self-exploration and reinvention that has fundamentally changed her. And it is our good fortune that she's now helping all of us live our lives to the fullest. Deb Boulanger, welcome to Military Mom Talk Radio. Thank you so much, Robin. I'm so happy to be here again. I am delighted because we've got so much to talk about. And before we uh, go on to all the things that we'd like to chat about, let's talk a little about that realization that you came to. You were humming along in a career and all of a sudden um, something happened, something clicked. Right. I had I had a couple of wake up calls, you know, the first of which was uh, realizing that my marriage af of 25 years was coming to an end. So that's a, a big wake up call that caused mm -hmm. me to reevaluate. And um, I didn't realize it at the time, but I had a whole progression. There was a, a, a framework, a process that I was going through of getting myself healthy again. And it started with first connecting with who I was. I had lost myself. And I think it happens to so many women. We go through life. We've got our job. We've got our kids. We've got our spouse. And we're doing everything as we're supposed to be doing. We're the glue that keeps everything together. But we don't show up on our own list. And somehow years can go by and we find that we're lost. Mm-hmm. That takes a lot of bravery, though, to face this and actually do something about it because we may know it, but how did you muster the bravery and the, and the strength to be able to face it and do something about it? Well, you know, we have two choices, right? We can live a shadow life and live out the rest of our days and say, well, this is just the lot that I've been handed and this is my fate and I will just go along with how things are even though it might be causing some pain or suffering or even just a sense of dissatisfaction. We, mm -hmm. we become sometimes inured to the feeling of dissatisfaction and don't consider it pain, but it really is. Uh, or we can choose to live life to the fullest because it is, when you look at it, it's such a short time on this planet. Now, whether we have, you know, 60 years, 80 years, 90 years, or 100 years, as many people are, are realizing now, mm -hmm. it's still a relatively short time, at least to me, I'm 57. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets shorter all the time. Isn't um, it true? Yeah. The older we get, the more we're all of a sudden realizing, wait a minute, that eon that we thought we were going through. 10 or 15 years ago isn't really an eon it was just a blip <laughs> exactly exactly so for me um, I'm curious and I like to get to the bottom of things and I started by making time out I, I actually went away on retreat I had to get a lot of support to do that um, I had to tap my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law to watch my son as I went away okay. for 10 days. I mean, 10 wow. days is a long time for a mom to be out of pocket. But right. it was so important to me 
to get in touch with who I was, to rediscover that woman inside me. And it took time. I mean, that was my, my first retreat. And I came to terms with what was going on in my relationship with my husband at that time and got some clarity and insight. But when we're buzzing around, we're not really, we don't realize it, but we're not really here. You know, we're thinking about the next thing to do, or we're worrying about what happened yesterday, or we're planning for what's going to happen tomorrow. And it's a real gift to just be in the moment. Um, there's so many books out there um, that are so useful. And uh, I'm trying to remember now the name of the Eckhart Tolle book um, about now. But there's okay. also Real Happiness by Sharon Salzberg. These are people who are teachers and, and educators in the spiritual realm that teach us how to take out time and get in touch with life as it's happening. I think sometimes we're, when we're faced with something that's critical, uh, for me, it was being faced with cancer and mm -hmm. having to realize not only I had to get through it, but that I could get through it, that that was a possibility that I could get through it. And then on the other side of it, realize that, okay, that was, that was a real wake-up call. I have to maybe appreciate my days a little bit more. And for people to not have to have that severe wake-up call <laughs> is, is really the, the preferred way of, of getting the, to that destination. I think we don't need to have something that severe. We need to just be able to appreciate where, what we need to be doing. And I'm sure it took steps for you to get to where you are. Um, we've got just a couple of minutes before our break. I'm sure you couldn't do it all overnight. I'm sure it was taking care of your relationship first, taking care of what you'll do next. It had to have been a progression. It was, um, and taking care of my health. So I'm glad you mentioned the, the wake-up call. I wasn't faced with something critical, but I had some autoimmune issues going on. Mm. So I also know that my body's perfect and given the right conditions, it can recover and heal itself. So getting in, that's how I got into nutrition and understanding this whole postmodern science around nutrition and healing and disease avoidance and cure. So mm. that was important too, but it takes a team. It takes a village, right? I couldn't do any it of this sure alone. Does. We're speaking today with Deb Boulanger. She is the owner of LiveAWholeLife.net. Wonderful advice coming your way, so don't go away. We're on Military Mom Talk Radio. We're glad you're here. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Radio Network presents the Diva Download with Tracy and Tasha. If you think Diva is all about attitude and drama, think again. The Diva Download is the premier online radio program where girls of all ages, shapes, sizes, and colors get together to redefine what it means to be a diva so that all girls can discover their inner diva and develop a healthy sense of self-worth and self-esteem. Being a true diva means you're diverse. Involved, value-driven, and active. That's today's diva. If you want to celebrate the girl in your life through education, encouragement, empowerment, and entertainment, join us every week on Tuesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time and celebrate the essence of being a girl only here on the WooHoo Radio Network. Familia, faith. Identity, tradición. Latina life is never boring, but it can be muy dramática. So how do you coexist between the old school ways of la abuela and the new school life you're creating for yourself without losing your faith, familia, identity, or tradiciones? Welcome to Living Latina with Francesca Escoto, where culture curls and curves collide in one spicy cross-cultural conversation that will leave you begging for mas. 
Francesca tackles all the important issues, from politics to family values, to religion to, you guessed it, relationships and men. As Chief Everything Officer at the WOW Factor, Francesca is passionate about showing women of all cultures, ages, and lifestyles how to rock what they've got with style, sass, and smarts. Be sure to join her every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for Living Latina, only on the WooHoo Radio Network. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey everyone, it's Robin Boyd with you here today on behalf of Sandra Beck while she's away. Uh, <laughs> I cannot sit still with those commercials. You know, you get one of those like Living Latina commercials. <laughs> I was I, dancing yeah. in my chair too, Robin. Yep. <laughs> You just have to. We have some wonderful shows on Toganet. So if you have not gotten uh, your your uh, iPod loaded with some great programming to, as you go out to the lake or to the beach or wherever you're going, be sure to download a number of our podcasts, including Military Mom Talk Radio. They're all on iTunes. They are free, and they are all there waiting for you. Today we're speaking with Deb Boulanger. She is the owner of LiveAWholeLife.net, and we can also get a hold of you through connectwithdeb.net is that correct did I say that right uh, connectwithdeb.com I'm sorry and uh, I have a lot of free gifts on my website so one of the first ones is the live a whole life guide to cooking and eating healthy food without adding to your to-do list and I know uh, moms on the run value things that can be done quickly and taste good so that's one thing that your listeners can go and download, and it's a handy guide. It's about 23 pages, and it also talks about healthy snacks for kids, and I'm sure it'll be of use. I love your recipes because you combine things, and especially um, in your um, healthy food guide, you have so many things that I guess I never would have even thought about. And we'll talk about your guide in just a few minutes, but I want to just sort of begin at the very beginning. Um, I just watched um, Sound of Music, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to start at the very beginning. Um, let's talk about the summer. We Here we are, midsummer. It's hot. We've got the grill going. We've got the picnic stuff out. Everybody's dragging out the chips and the potato salad. Let's talk about summer snacks and how to eat and have fun in the summer and not go crazy being paranoid about what we're putting in our mouth every minute. Right. You know, so we want things that are quick and easy and tasty and good for us. So the things right. that we're worried about are some of the things that are so readily available in the commissary. And that's um, the packaged foods, cookies and snacks and things like right. that, that pack a lot of preservatives and additives that have proven to be pretty harmful to our children. So one of the things I love best is uh, it's summer bounty, right? So there's so much fresh fruit. And we you've probably heard about freezing grapes. I remember when my son was, was small, he just loved popping frozen grapes in his mouth. Uh, but you can also make fruit kebabs. You can put bananas and strawberries and things like that and make individual fruit kebabs and freeze those and you can make a bunch of them so you bring them out during a party and the kids can have fun with those and there's also um, dip right so little kids Mm -hmm. love to dip everything and you can just get some yogurt and lemon and honey and make a little yogurt dip and you can dip your fresh strawberries into the yogurt dip and sometimes kids won't eat vegetables or or fruits, but if you <laughs> give them a dip to stick it yeah. in, they love it. What I think is sort of not um, 
more and more people are realizing that you can take things and, and more and more people either have the magic bullet or one of their blender type things and it doesn't take anything to throw some fresh fruit into the blender and instead of having preserves that you buy at the store you can it doesn't necessarily have to be gelled and and preserved as a as a uh, jelly a, a spread can certainly go on on to your fruit and vegetables or snacks or whatever and that was really healthy because it just came from the garden Oh, exactly. You know, there's so many great things. I've got basil growing crazy out in a pot here, and I can make some, you know, quick pesto with that. The other thing, you mentioned the blender, is Mm -hmm. so many people are making smoothies these days. They're very, very popular. And you can make smoothies, and you can freeze them, and those are so much better than the ice pops that you're buying in the freezer. And they're going to save you so much money because you're just making them yourself. And you can use that fruit that might be a little bit too old to eat, but Mm. it's not bad. It just doesn't look so great. And you can throw that fruit in the blender so you're actually uh, being economical and not tossing out your fruit. And that's so true because it doesn't take much, especially when you've got a humid day, that things turn so quickly and you don't always leave everything in the refrigerator. You don't want it in the fridge, but, but if you don't put it in the fridge, it's, it's going to really turn almost overnight. So that's good to know that it's okay to use something that's starting to get a little funky looking. Yeah, it's just overripe, right? You you know, yep. we don't want to use anything that's got well, any sort of mold yeah. on it. But if it's getting <laughs> soft or mealy or something, there's still good nutrition in there. You can throw it in the blender, make a smoothie pop out of it, and the kids love that. Well, uh, of course, when I was a kid, I remember my mom having those little molds that had the little plastic handle. So then she would make the, the Kool-Aid pops, but it's so much better to have a fruit pop instead. That's wonderful. What's your take on organic? Organic foods can be so expensive, but are they really always the better choice? Uh yeah, well, it depends. So there's yeah. um, there's a website I'd like to direct everyone to. It's called the Environmental Working Group, ewg.org. And uh, they're doing a lot of research and they're, they're big uh, proponents of living a healthy life. They're screening what's the contents and the chemicals that are in our skincare products. And they publish something every year called the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. And that's the most contaminated and the least contaminated produce. And you can actually download this app onto your phone. And I just got a new phone. I was looking for for mine. I probably don't have it yet on this new phone. Uh Uh, But it's a handy guide, so you can take it to the grocery store with you. And it just makes logical sense. So things that have a skin like Mm -hmm. onions and avocados and things like that are safer to eat non-organic. Got it. But if you have something like berries and cherries, things that are really heavily pesticide laden, those Mm -hmm. are the things that are best to buy organic. Okay. Even if we wash them with the proper washing uh, materials or or stuff, it's still it's still not as good. Right. It's really in the fruit, even apples. So you would think Mm -hmm. apples that have a very thick skin, but they're actually heavily pesticide laden. And these pesticides and herbicides are endocrine disruptors. So they're disrupting Mm. the endocrine system and disrupting the hormones. And there's so much that produces, you know, too much estrogen in uh, children that we want to avoid that as much as possible. And you can't wash it off, unfortunately. That's really, I mean, it's good to know because sometimes you wonder, okay, is this just a ploy for me to spend more money or is this really part of my health, <laughs> healthy eating? Um, and it, it's kind of good to know what our benchmark is and, and thinking about the berries and apples and whatnot. Um, it, it's good to know that that's where we should be spending our organic money. And I know in your food guide, your healthy food guide, you do talk about meats as well. Um, and which is your better choice for meats? So with meats, we at least want to buy meats that are antibiotic and hormone free. Mm -hmm. So our, our culture has become over-reliant on antibiotics and there are 
more and more powerful strains of bacteria that are developing now that no antibiotic will fight because our the we've been training bacteria to get stronger and stronger and stronger because we're always introducing antibiotics well the same thing with animals so when animals are raised on factory farms in close quarters, there's a lot of disease and illness. So in order to keep the animals healthy, the farmers have to shoot them full of antibiotics. And then we're consuming that muscle meat from those animals and we're getting those antibiotics. And they're often fed extra hormones so that they get fatter and they're, they're, they have more muscle mass. So if you ever look at a commercially produced chicken versus an organic or naturally raised chicken, the breasts are much smaller in the naturally raised chicken because it's not getting all of that extra hormones. Mm. When you stop and think about it, it really is kind of scary. You really want to say, okay, I have to pay attention. Um, I really do have to go to the grocery store with uh, a mission and really plan out what I'm going to eat. And that takes a little time. So, um, it, But it's worth the time for our families. It is worth the time because we are the unhealthiest we've ever been as a nation. And uh, I saw a statistic from I think the Center for Disease Control that this generation of children, our children, are the first generation that might not outlive their parents. Isn't that scary? When that when you're faced with that kind of statistic, it really makes you say, okay. <laughs> Talk about a turning point in one's life. We're going to say this is really important to start paying attention to what we're eating and what we're giving our children. We've got about a minute before the break, Deb. We're here today with Deb Boulanger from liveaholelife.net. Um, what I would like you to do is download. She offered her free downloads at her website, uh, my Healthy Food Guide is on there. And did you say another periodical is on there? Or not a periodical, but another resource? I have another resource. It's not on the website, but it's okay. uh, myslimdownguide.com. And it's a way to lose weight without dieting. <laughs> Ooh, well, that sounds like <laughs> something that we all need. Uh, Deb Boulanger will be with us after the break. If uh, you've missed any of this show, you'll want to go to iTunes, go to militarymomtalkradio.com, or right here on our Toganet station. All of our podcasts are available for you, and we do hope that you will take them with you, as I said earlier, to, the, to your summer destinations. A great way to spend the afternoon at the lake. See you back in a moment on Military Mom Talk Radio. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Familia, faith, identity, tradición. Latina life is never boring, but it can be muy dramática. So how do you coexist between the old school ways of la abuela and the new school life you're creating for yourself without losing your faith, familia, identity, or tradiciones? Welcome to Living Latina with Francesca Escoto, where culture curls and curves collide in one spicy cross-cultural conversation that will leave you begging for mas. Francesca tackles all the important issues, from politics to family values, to religion to, you guessed it, relationships and men. As Chief Everything Officer at the WOW Factor, Francesca is passionate about showing women of all cultures, ages, and lifestyles how to rock what they've got with style, sass, and smarts. Be sure to join her every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for Living Latina, only on the WooHoo Radio Network. Get ready for Wise Up Radio, leveraging your learning, leadership, and legacy with Donna Kimbrand, the edgy evolutionary, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, here on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you're an entrepreneurial leader or visionary, 
Stay ahead of your game with insights, tools, and strategies that give you the thought leader's edge. Each week, join Donna and her guests as she'll ask the edgy questions, help you discover game-changing shortcuts to better thinking and learning, how to explore the ripple effects of leadership excellence, and how to create your life as a living legacy, where the legacy you leave is the life you live. As thought leaders, you need strategies to help you enjoy the confidence and thrill of riding the wave of rapid change. For more on Donna, check out her website, GameChangerThinking.com. Then join the conversation and sharpen up your wits on Wise Up Radio with Donna Kimbrand, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, here on the Rockstar Radio Network. Because there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the U.S. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio. This is Robin Boyd with you today on behalf of Sandra Beck while she's away. And today we're chatting with Deb Boulanger from LiveAWholeLife.net. And we're talking about tips for summer fun and safety. And one of the things, we were talking about nutrition in in the last segment, but sort of a segue into what we want to get into uh, next might be hydration, Deb. Um, we're talking about foods that are good for us, but what about hydration? I know everybody reaches for a Coke or a Pepsi, and they mm-hmm. think maybe a Diet Coke is a little better for us because of the sugar content, but that's not what we should be reaching for, is it? No, it's not. And uh, most of us are really pretty dehydrated. The The way to get your hydration up and to make sure you're drinking enough water is to drink half of your body weight in ounces of water every day. Wow. So if you're 150 pounds, that's 75 mm-hmm. ounces of water. That's just over a half gallon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's a good gauge. That's a very, very good gauge. I like that. Yeah, and it's easy. So for me, I love to buy these quart mason jars because they're mm-hmm. they're cheap and they're kind of cute and they're great for smoothies. But it also helps me measure my water consumption and how many times I fill those a day. So that's just a, a quick tip. And if you're having any sort of inflammation in your body, if you have arthritis or you're having allergies, it's a really good practice to just put a couple of slices of lemon in your water. It has this alkalizing effect on the bloodstream and that helps reduce inflammation, reduce colds, reduce allergies hmm. and uh, reduce pain due to arthritis and things like that. Wow, that's interesting. Now I do that because I like the taste, but mm-hmm. wow, I was didn't realize it was as beneficial for me uh, health-wise. That's really interesting. I, I want to talk about, we we're talking about how to help our insides and I want to talk about our outsides. Before I do though, I've got to ask you, what is the difference between pink sea salt versus any other kind of salt? Ah, so uh, salt is is so critical to our health, right? So Mm -hmm. minerals are very, very important, but most of us are living on public water supplies and there are no minerals in that water. So it's important that we consume enough sodium and magnesium and and selenium, a real good quality sea salt is just mined from the sea. It's naturally air dried. Some of it's from Hawaii or the Himalayans and there's some natural pink clay in there that that adds additional minerals. So that's where the pink color comes from. And the sea salt that is natural is full of not only sodium, which many people need for the healthy functioning of their kidneys, but magnesium. Uh, it also has oh, now selenium in it and calcium and all these things that are so critical for our body function. So pink sea salt, or there's one that I found, there's only one I found in a grocery store and it's called real salt. Hmm. And if you read the label, 
you will see that it's real Mediterranean sea salt and it has been air dried. Most of the salt we buy is pure chemical and it's actually dangerous. And that's why people who have hypertension mm -hmm. or high blood pressure don't have salt because it's actually dangerous to the system. Yeah, yeah, I, I am one of them and I do have to be careful. Um, and I do have a kosher salt, but I also do have sea salt. And what's what's interesting too is because I filter my water because we are on a town water supply, I'm actually stripping all of the minerals probably out of my water by filtering it, right? Yeah, so we're stripping the minerals as well as the chlorine and fluoride and arsenic, which is also very bad for us. Yeah. You know, I don't want to get people depressed in the show, Robin, but <laughs> we really are living in somewhat of a toxic environment, and we have to be careful about what we put into our bodies so that we stay healthy long into our 80s and into our centurion years, hopefully. But right. yes, um, mm. It Water is important. So, yeah, definitely. So what about the outside of our bodies now? We're outside and we're swimming and we're, we're hiking and we're picnicking. What do we do with our skin? Well, you know, the skin is very important, right? And while, while getting good sunshine is important for our bodies too because it helps us produce vitamin D, it's the only way we produce vitamin D unless we take it um, mm -hmm. internally as a supplement. But we need to, to wear a sunscreen, but not all sunscreens are created equal. And it's scary. Yeah. There's, there's more than 80,000 chemicals that are unregulated that go into our skincare products. So there's a, a few good guidelines. And again, these come from the Environmental Working Group or EWG.org. Is the spray sunscreens, which are so convenient. And I know as a mom, when my kid was younger and those came on the market, I was one of the first to buy them because mm -hmm. they were so easy to apply to the children. But they turn out to be not as effective so the Food and Drug Administration has expressed concern about the safety and eff efficacy of those spray scun sunscreens. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and they also say the super high SPFs are not any more effective than, than those that are 50 plus. And they're, they're looking at uh, making regulations that 50 plus is the highest that you can put on there because it encourages people to just stay out in the sun longer when it sure. really isn't safe. Right, right. Um, and I, I have, too, been reading things like this. And so it does make you wonder, all right, if they're saying this isn't as, is giving me the protection that I thought. Of course, when we go in the water, you're going to need to replace it anyway, right? Yeah, you need to reapply. But the, the best way to be safe in the sun is to just limit your exposure, Sure. Is to stay in the shade, wear a hat, wear sunglasses. We don't even think about it, but our eyes are so sensitive to the sun's rays. Mm. You should be wearing sunglasses in the morning right through to, to dusk because what happens is when the sun is at that angle, when it's coming up in the sky or going lower in the sky, you're much more susceptible to those dangerous rays. So Isn't get a uh, dark lens, make sure that they are polarized, and wear them all the time because uh, it's one of the primary reasons why we develop cataracts and why that's so prevalent. Wow. Wow. Don't think about relating that to cataracts. Hmm. Yeah. So sunglasses, they're not just a fashion statement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually worth something. So they, you know, get one that has a broad, true broad spectrum mm -hmm. uh, protection. And... Um, and be fashionable too. <laughs> we and be we fashionable have to throw too. a little fashion in there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least we're in a we we uh, wide brimmed hats are very fashionable. The sunglasses are very fashionable. So, so there you are. I have to say, I bring a parasol with me uh, many times because of the meds that I am on. I'm not mm -hmm. supposed to be out in the sun a lot, so um, I bring a parasol and. Yeah. Um, it's it's one of those things that, you know, it, I don't really, I guess when you get a little bit older, you kind of say, I don't care if someone's looking at me with a funny look. I'm going to be safe and happy. 
Exactly. And I, I really do see uh, parasols from so- time to time. I remember being on the soccer field, you know, watching my son play in the local league and uh, several people would be there, even with umbrellas, you know, if not parasols, yep. just to protect themselves from sitting out on those bleachers in the blazing sun. That's the other right. thing I wanted to mention about sunscreens is there are some chemicals to watch out for. So there's one called oxybenzone, that's O-X-Y-B-E-N-Z-O-N-E. That's another endocrine disrupting chemical. And another one is retinal palmitate, P-A-L-M-I-T-A-T-E. So this is a form of Retin-A, and it's supposed to have anti-aging effects, but on sun-exposed skin, it may actually speed the development of skin tumors and lesions. And, you know, skin cancer is the number one cancer. It is. And it's scary. Actually, if I found the long and hard way that there are a lot of cosmetics that I just could not wear or or uh, moisturizer type creams that I could not wear because it had those sunscreen elements in it. So I actually look for... Um, things that don't have that in it and I've gone to you know the mineral makeup seems to work fine and it doesn't have those those chemicals in them but I would break out and and definitely Mm. have reactions to them so that's very very true people are going to have to definitely download this podcast to be able to write down all the all the information you're giving us yeah, and I, I've got some more because um, it's so true with the, the cosmetics. And I, too, I've just converted over to mineral makeup. It was the mm-hmm. the last frontier for me. You know, you get so <laughs> attached to your blush. But, yes, you know, if you're breaking out around mm-hmm. your chin and the sides of your chin, that's your liver detoxing mm-hmm. there. So ancient Chinese medicine has all these meridian points over your body, and uh, that's liver detox. So we wow. know that these chemicals... That we're putting on our skin our skin is so absorbent they're getting right uh, absorbed right into our bloodstream there's a great organization um, that's come out and they work with the environmental working group and they're also aligned with a campaign for safe cosmetics and it's called beauty counter and that's one word beauty counter and you can find them at beautycounter.com and it's all sold through uh, associates. I, I sell beauty counter products as well. I don't really sell them. I, I yeah. order them for me and for my clients. And um, what I love about beauty counter is that there's a sunscreen line and there's also a kid's line. Is the other thing we don't think about is shampoo. Oh, of course. And especially if you've got a little blonde toe head, that's even more important. Deb, we've got one more break coming up on us here. Um, we're with Deb Boulanger today from liveawholelife.net. And on the other side of the break, Deb, let's uh, just finish up what we're talking about as far as our skin and taking care of the outsides of us. And then let's talk, merge into talking a little about what we're, uh, our mental state and our heart state is. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll go from, from outsides to inside. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Have you heard? The pages of American Patchwork and Quilting magazine come to life on our new weekly online radio show, American Patchwork and Quilting. Join Pat Sloan, our blogging and quilt designer host, as she talks about the latest trends, ideas, and inspirations. Her guests include quilt pattern designers, authors, quilt shop owners, and our editors. All quilters, just like you. Call in with your questions. Get quilting tips from industry experts. Learn about free patterns. Hear behind-the-scenes stories from our magazines, American Patchwork and Quilting, Quilt Sampler, and Quilts and More. Get the scoop on free stuff and find out more about the best independent quilt shops in North America. To listen to a live show, tune in Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Just log on to allpeoplequilt.com slash radio. To hear past shows, go to iTunes and search for American Patchwork and Quilting Radio. We hope you'll join us because we know that quilting changes everything. This is... 
God in Country, the collision of faith and politics, hosted by nationally known speaker, Reverend Dr. Sean Michael Greener. Not your typical Rev. Dr. Sean is a proud military veteran, former law enforcement officer, and founder of the internationally regarded Executive Protection Team. Dr. Sean holds a bachelor's degree in biblical counseling and master's and doctorate degrees in theology and is currently pursuing a doctorate in ministry with a Hebrew worldview focus. Through his counseling, elite life coaching, and national speaking, this ninja pastor tells it like it is. This series is biblically and politically engaged with the pedal to the metal. Join host and author of the acclaimed yet controversial book, Excellence Killed the Church, How Mediocrity is Destroying America, Dr. Sean Michael Greener, every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on this radio network. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Welcome back, everyone, to Military Mom Talk Radio. This is Robin Boyd with you today, along with Deb Boulanger of LiveAWholeLife.net. Uh, Deb works with people to create and execute achievable plans. I like that, Deb, achievable mm-hmm. plans, because, you know, sometimes you, and this is a tangent because I was going to finish the paragraph, but I had to stop to say the operative word. Sometimes you have a plan in life and you look at the far end and the far end goal and then you get discouraged at step two because the plan isn't totally achievable. You have to make achievable plans along the way, don't you? Well, what I like to do is not censor myself. I love to encourage my clients, and I do it myself, is to think big. There's no reason why you can't dream big. But then when I wake up every morning and I look at my goals, I ask myself, what action can I take today that will bring me one step closer? Because that's all you need to do. There's a, mm-hmm. It's great to have a big dream. Uh, There's goals and there's your to-do list. And I don't consider your to-do list goals. I think goals are things that are aligned to your dreams, that are aligned to your desires and how you want your life to unfold. Hmm. Before we talk a little bit more about that um, sense of sort of heartfelt satisfaction, Mm. let's just wrap up a little bit talking about the the foods a tad. I did want to touch on something as far as sugars because – during the summer, the kids are going to be eating a lot of sugar or they're going to crave it or all, even us as adults are going to crave sugars. What are some either alternatives or maybe you can tell us a little bit about what date or coconut sugars are? Mm. So I love dates, right? So dates are the sweetest fruit on a glycemic index. They're right there at the top. And it's great to, instead of a scoop of sugar, if you're making a a smoothie that has a lot of vegetables in it, I'll throw in a date or two and they'll Mm. give it a natural sweetness. So date sugar is a very sweet sugar and it's a natural sugar and it's very safe. Um, The other sugars uh, would be, coconut sugar is great too. Coconut sugar is not as sweet as date sugar. So it's kind of based on your taste preferences. Of Mm. course, there's honey, Mm. you know, Honey is is just Mm -hmm. so delicious. And Mm -hmm. maple syrup is a really great choice for substituting in recipes. Very, very good. And up in New England especially, we certainly do have a lot of maple sugar. Um, My daughter, in fact, for... Her father gave her him a gallon of maple sugar, and we ended up having to freeze some of it because we just couldn't eat a whole gallon of maple sugar. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's so delicious. And the syrup, yeah, 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 it is. Um, 
we're talking, we, we've been talking about what's good for our nutrition and what's good for our skin. But now let's talk a little bit about um, our well-being. And especially with the kids home all summer long, uh, sometimes working moms are frantic because they've either got to get the kids to daycare or, or a sitter or camp. Um, and where if the regular school year isn't busy enough, this is even putting more uh, responsibility and stress on us. How can we sort of give ourselves a little retreat during the summer? I think it's really important to find some me time. And I know it's hard, and summer is even harder than the school year. Mm. And one of the things that I've heard has been very successful is when moms get together and create a, a club, you know, whatever they call it, you know, the the Alliance of the Sisterhood or <laughs> <laughs> the Time for Me Club or whatever you call it is, if you can get a bunch of other moms together and they, you can take turns giving each other time for yourselves. So I would say even if you just have a couple of hours, create a mini spa day at home. Really plan to give yourself some pampering and some loving care and whether that's you know, a warm oil massage or a, mm-hmm. a scrub before you get into the shower, or if it's just time to sit quietly and journal or meditate, we all need that time to connect to ourselves or we just start losing it. You know, mm-hmm. we start, we start revving out of control and we start losing our tempers with our kids and that stress level keeps increasing and stress is also another big cause of, of disease. And it's also a big cause of, weight gain. So the more cortisol that we produce, the fatter we get and the less sleep we get, the fatter we get and the fatter we get, the sicker we get. So it's really important to take time out to just relax and breathe and get some time alone. And it is difficult, especially if um, spouses are deployed. And like you say, there might be a a matter of getting together with somebody else and doing some swap off time. And it's true. It does. Maybe it's only an hour or two, but that hour just as long as you say, all right, I'm not going to put the dishes away when the kids walk out the door. I'm not going to run and do that load of laundry. I'm going to actually sit down and do whatever it is that I need in my little moment of Zen to be able to say, yes, this is for me. And maybe it is, you know, when I was when my kids were little, for me to know that I could go to church on Sunday mm-hmm. morning was my hour. And whether the kids went down to the nursery when they were very little, or whether they went to the Sunday school, or sometimes stayed home with grandma, uh, and we just went, that was important. Or um, if it was a matter of just that one hour to be able to do the one errand without the kids tagging along. <laughs> I can say I have so many times I'll see a mother that I know has a brood at home and they'll be all alone in the grocery store and they're just sauntering along slowly. (laughs) (laughs) I know those precious moments alone but yeah connecting to your spiritual self I love the fact that you mentioned church so whatever whatever spirituality means to you I have some clients who have just latched on to the concept of creating a daily intention. And that's when your eyes first open in the morning and you're just reaching consciousness to kind of connect with what's your intention intention for today. And it might just be to be calm. It might be to be relaxed. It might be to really be present with my spouse or be really present with my children. Mm -hmm. Um, And the intention, I have one client in particular, she said her life turned around after she started living intentionally and setting that intention every morning. That is so powerful. There is so much in perspective, I think. And this is where someone such as yourself who is just out as an objective uh, person telling us, slow down, this is this is your focus, and helping us just regroup. And isn't it true, just having that moment to regroup and be able to face, because we, life is going to go on, and life is going to throw stuff at us, and life is going to be challenging. But if we, in our hearts, 
have a good place to be, then whatever gets thrown at us, we can deal with just that much more um, effectively, I guess you could say. more Not necessarily calmly, but <laughs> maybe a little more rationally or maybe a little more um, in control. And that's what we need. Yeah, absolutely. And protecting our sleep is part of that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe it means not getting your alone time and staying up late after the kids go to bed. It might be getting up earlier in the morning and enjoying mm -hmm. those early morning hours, setting your intention. The other practice that my clients really latch on to is something called morning pages. And that's just a stream of consciousness writing. It's not like journaling or reflecting on what happened yesterday. But it's just stream of consciousness. We're waking up. We're thinking of a million things mm -hmm. from the moment we just open our eyes in the morning. And some of it's negative. You know, 90%, 80% of what goes on in our heads is kind of this negative talk track. And 90% of that repeats throughout the day. So having a practice where you can actually just get that out to, onto the page releases it. You know, and mm. so therefore you're not bound by it for the rest of the day. So that has been an important practice too. That really does. I, I have to say I have somewhat of a need to feel organization. And if it means just making a list the night before for me or making sure that the, the, the pants that I wanted to wear the next day to work are, are not wet in the washing machine <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> That means that I can wake up, and this is what my husband and I used to do for years. I mean, we've been, I told you in the chat beforehand, we've been married for 38 years, and when our kids were little and we owned our own business, the only time that we could be together was in the morning. And we would get up earlier, and he, I didn't care what time he had to be out of the house, I would get up with him and we'd have our coffee. Excuse me, and that would be the time that we would at least start our day. And that might be the only time we'd have to talk, but we wouldn't talk about anything stressful. It would be our moment to start the day. So um, I hope everybody finds that one moment in their day to be able to, to focus and, and be able to regroup. And, and as long as hearts are in place and nutrition is in place, then we're, we're off to a great summer. Deb Boulanger, it's, it's just about time to wrap up the show. Um, websites, why don't you give us all of the websites we can find you at? Sure. It's been so much fun, Robin. Thank you. So my website is liveawholelife.net. And you can also find me on Facebook at Live a Whole Life Network. And that's where I post daily tips and pieces of inspiration and uh, also places where I'm talking. So free webinars that I'm doing or any uh, free guides or ebooks that you can download. So that's a great resource is to connect on Facebook. Perfect. I love it. And it's true. You do have a ton of things that you have not only on your website, but as you say, on Facebook. And what a wonderful resource you are. Deb Boulanger, thank you so much. You Thanks, are Robin. Dear. You're wonderful. <laughs> so much and fun. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Do download this podcast because she had a ton of information for you. So we want to make sure that you have it all. Uh, do tune in next week. We're going to have all the more for you. Um, in the meantime, if you want to uh, take a book along with you wherever you're going, make sure you check out our Military Writers Society, mwsadispatches.com. All the latest releases are there. You'll want to check them out. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on Military Mom Talk Radio. Take care.